It's been two weeks, but very intense weeks. I have had the chance to meet with all uh, relevant stakeholders in the country, have uh, the possibility to visit uh, territorial areas where the ex-combatants are. So uh, there are probably two main uh, messages that I get uh, from them. One is that uh, they are all very committed and still committed to the peace process. And um, the important role that the UN has played throughout these years in uh, verifying the implementation, in helping them to achieve in the first place the agreement. Those are kind of uh, the first two main messages that, that I receive. Uh, we have some progress in the reintegration process uh, where uh, we have productive projects, we have disbursements for the productive, productive projects, though still we need to scale up uh, those, uh, uh, those, uh, those projects to be implemented. And there are other areas that uh, they, we probably, and these commitments to do that, um, have uh, bigger uh, efforts, like uh, in areas of security guarantees, as I uh, explained today to the Council. There are, uh, unfortunately, still a number of um, assassinations of uh, social leaders and human rights defenders and also ex-combatants. So uh, in that area we need um, further, further efforts to devise a more systemic response but also some specific measures in order to uh, address the issue. I mean the good thing is that the government is really committed, the president himself has have, um, committed to uh, devise those uh, plans put into play, put into action those that he already has and so hope it will be hopefully it will be uh, uh, addressed soon uh, that will be another area I mean we have a complex year in the sense that we have also elections at the end of the year and that will uh, as you know elections tend to be a polarizing event so uh, we then all these uh, measures need to be also planned according to those events that are coming so I think that probably would be um, in a nutshell, the first couple of impressions, but also uh, an impressions on slash assessment on, on, on where we are throughout the, the areas of, uh, of the mandate of the mission, but also the areas that uh, on the agreement as such. No? International community uh, support, international community involvement in, in all the steps on this process has been key, uh, very much channeled through the Security Council support and then through the presence of the mission but also through the presence and commitment of donors, of uh, different actors uh, helping the process going forward. So I hope and I trust that they will continue to be engaged uh, they are uh, very committed, they have expressed it today again, the members of the Council, but I have also heard it in Bogota. But it also uh, depends, as the government uh, representative, the Minister, was saying today, they, uh, uh, they are aiming at the um, contributions of the inter international community to be aligned with their, uh, with their overall plan, with their national priorities, which, mes which, which, which makes totally sense. So the international community should continue to be working in probably uh, in two different uh, stages. One, accompanying the government, continue to help uh, the Colombian process and the Colombian uh, areas within the agreement to, to be successful. But also, once the plan can be more articulated and, and, and to see where the, those actions can be further inserted, then uh, probably helping the government in those areas that they are flagging as key within the roadmap and within their plan of peace, and peace with legality that uh, they have just issued rather recently. You know? There's lessons probably to be learned for everyone, not only the Colombians themselves, but also the international community, also the Security Council. At the end, it's a process that the international community once again accompany a basically internally driven process. It was an agreement among the parties that then 
the international community through the Security Council in particular embrace, embrace, follow up and now we're trying to exert a, uh, a sort of oversight in order to ensure its success. So I think one of the key aspects of Colombia that uh, differentiates among uh, the recent um, uh, evolution of conflict and the involvement of the international community is that really is a process that comes um, from the bottom up. So in a way, I think that's something for, to be learned, not only for the other processes, but also for those bodies that are in charge of business security, for instance. Uh, the Colombia process or the Colombia even agreement in itself is uh, really at the forefront on gender related provisions, for instance. Um, they have uh, gender uh, mainstream, gender focus is across the board in the, in the document. So that's, I think, is, uh, it raises the bar in terms of uh, to be a, a peace agreement really gender focus. So uh, I think that's something to be learned. We still, uh, and I have to admit that, we're still uh, not in a good stage of implementing those provisions and that's probably an area of challenge for the future. But at least in the design of the agreement, I think something also to be learned. Um, now we have, uh, as you mentioned, we have other other challenges still this year and we need to ensure that the success story of Colombia uh, is, still, uh, is still maintained but hopefully it will, we will then drive it together with the Colombians, with the Colombian authorities to, um, to a good place so we can then continue calling it a success and continue um, sharing this experience with potential uh, peace processes and hopefully with potential successful peace processes.